Hello there. Uh, this video I do today is about the Lunar Sabbath. The reason why I'm doing it is because, firstly, somebody asked me to do it, and secondly, there seems to be a lot of people promoting this doctrine now. And they're very sincere about what they're doing, and it looks like uh, a lot of people are being converted over. But just as they sincerely believe that what they're promoting is right, so I also sincerely believe what they're promoting is wrong. So let me show you exactly what these people are teaching. This is the Lunar Sabbath calendar. It is typical of every month. Uh, the first day they call a new moon day. They do not count this as a work day uh, when you are counting to the Sabbath. Uh, the second day of the month is the first work day. The third day of the month is the second work day. The fourth day of the month is the third work day. The fifth day of the month is the fourth work day. The sixth day of the month is the fifth work day. And the seventh day of the month is the sixth work day. Therefore, the Sabbath comes on the 8th of the month. And following on, in a regular six-day work cycle, then the Sabbath, we follow all the way through the 15th, the 22nd and the 29th of Sabbath days. And when there are 30 days in a month, this is another day that they do not count as a work day. So every month, they are missing out one or two days in their count to the Sabbath day. Now I'll have to show you a couple of scriptures that they use uh, to prove what they say. And the first one is Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heaven to divide between the day and the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heaven to give light on the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now in verse 14 we have the word seasons, which is translated from the word moedim. It occurs also in Psalm 104, verse 19, where it says, He made the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. The word seasons here translates from the word moedi. It's the plural of the word moed, uh, which is Strong's number 4150. Uh, it means a set time, a meeting time, a meeting place, uh, an appointment, uh, something to that effect. And so what they are trying to make out from this verse is that the moon has been appointed in order to uh, say when the Sabbath day starts. The word occurs 233 times in the Old Testament and in the King James Version of the Bible it's translated congregation 150 times. Uh, it comes in the phrase tabernacle of the congregation. In other words, it's a meeting place. Uh, it wasn't referring to the time because they met at different times. Uh, the vast majority of the use of this word is not to do with time. And some of them are just appointments, like David making an appointment with Jonathan. When um, Israel attacked Ai, there was, a, there was a sign, a set sign, that smoke went up from the city. Uh, these were nothing at all to do with the moon. But I would agree that there are certain places which are fixed times, and they are set from the beginning of the month. These are the feast days, like the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Booths, the Day of Atonement, uh, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, these are all on fixed dates. And anything that's on a fixed date is set from the beginning of the month. So you could say 
uh, it's set from the moon. But the moon doesn't uh, dictate every time in scripture when things are done. And it's never said to dictate when the Sabbath day starts. The sun does uh, tell us when the Sabbath day starts. It doesn't tell us which day it is, but it tells us that the day starts at sunset. And therefore it tells us when the Sabbath day begins. But before I show you what is wrong with this doctrine, I want to show you some scriptures where God has instructed us how to study his word to avoid error. And to do this, I want to start with Deuteronomy chapter 4. And in verse 2 it says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 12 verse 32 Every word which I command you, observe to do it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Proverbs 30 verse 5 Every word of God is refined. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he reproves you, and you are found a liar. Revelation 22, verse 18. For I testify to every man who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and out of the holy city and the things which are written in this book. Now here is the main objection to the lunar Sabbath teaching. Lunar Sabbath doesn't occur anywhere in scripture. Those words are just never found together. There is no command anywhere in the word of God, although New Testament, to count the Sabbath day from where the moon is. Nowhere does it say that uh, you should uh, miss out the first day of the month and the 30th day of the month from the count to the Sabbath. And nowhere does it say that you must count the 8th, 15th, 22nd and 29th of Sabbath days. The Sabbath day was never a fixed date in Scripture. It falls on different days of the month on a regular basis. In order to prove this doctrine wrong, all you really have to do is find a place in Scripture where the Sabbath day does not fall on the 8th or the 15th or the 22nd or the 29th of the month. And if there's ever a place where it doesn't fall on those dates, then it proves this doctrine false. And what I want to do in this teaching, I want to show you several places where it doesn't fall on those dates. Uh, so let's take a look at the first one. And the first one is uh, back in Genesis chapter 1, when God created the heaven and the earth. This is a diagram of the creation week. You can see the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, and the sixth day, where God created all that he created. The seventh day was the day that he rested. On the first day, he created the heavens and the earth, and he commanded light. On the second day, he, cre he created an expanse, dividing the waters above it from the waters below it. On the third day, he commanded dry land to appear and trees and fruits and plants to grow. On the fourth day, he made the sun, the moon and the stars to inhabit the heavens. On the fifth day, he created fish to inhabit the waters and birds to inhabit the air around the earth. On the sixth day, he created animals and man to inhabit the earth. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. You can see from this diagram that the first day of creation was a work day. You can also see that the first day of the first week was a work day, 
and the first day of the first month was a work day. This is a problem with the lunar Sabbatarians. They do not count the first day of the month as a work day. Also, you can see that God did not create the sun and the moon and the stars until the fourth day. And this shows that God never set the seventh day as a count from the moon or the sun or any other thing that he made. He set the count from creation because the sun and the moon didn't exist when he started counting the first, second and third day. So in God's creation week, the seventh day Sabbath was never counted from the moon. You can also see that the seventh day of the first month in history was a Sabbath day. But lunar Sabbatarians claim that the eighth day, the fifteenth day, the twenty-second and the twenty-ninth are the Sabbath days. So the lunar Sabbatarians are not keeping the Sabbath that God instituted at the creation of the world. So how do they get around this? I don't know if all the Lunar Sabbath people do it, but I did go on one website where they added a day before day one of creation. And this is something what their calendar would look like. On the top row you can see God's creation days, first six days of work, and then the seventh was his day of rest. But they put a new moon day before the first day of creation. So the first day of creation under God's calendar actually becomes day two on theirs. So instead of the Sabbath falling on the seventh day of the first month of creation, on their calendar it falls on day eight. Well, this is a total case of adding to what God's word says again, isn't it? And it's easy to disprove. If you go to um, Exodus chapter 20 and read verse 11 there. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. So God says that he made everything in six days. There was no day before the first day of creation. And there was no new moon day before the first day. Notice also in this scripture that God is repeating his six days of work and one day of rest that he kept in the Old Testament. And there are many more places in scripture where the same sequence is repeated. Exodus chapter 16 verse 25. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, none shall be in it. This was God's instructions for gathering manna. He told them, six days you may gather it. On the sixth day there would be twice as much as uh, there would normally be for a day. But on the seventh day, there would not be any manna. And so he's again repeating the same cycle, six days of work and one day of rest. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your God. Do not do any work in it. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is inside your gates. Exodus 23 verse 12 Six days you shall do your work, on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. Exodus 31 verse 15 Six days may work be done, but the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. Exodus 34, verse 21. 
Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In ploughing time and in harvest you shall rest. Exodus 35 verse 2 Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of complete rest to Yahweh. Whoever does any work in it shall be put to death. Now here, the six-day cycle of work and the one day of rest have been repeated over and over. And there is no mention anywhere of any new moon days or 30th day of the month being missed out of the count. And two of the last three scriptures that we read said that if you worked on the Sabbath day, you would surely be put to death. And this actually happened in the Old Testament, where a man was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day, and he was put to death for it. Do we still put people to death for gathering on the Sabbath day today? <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, God says in the New Testament, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. The penalty is still the same. Uh, if God gave the penalty of death in the Old Testament, then at least spiritual death in this life is going to be given to those who break his commandments. Because the wages of sin is death, and uh, this is what the scripture teaches. Also, there are a couple of scriptures where um, we can find that in the book of Revelation, where it talks about the second death. These are Revelation 20, verse 14, and Revelation 21, verse 8, where it says, All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burns with brimstone, which is the second death. And if you say that the Sabbath day only falls on the 8th and the 15th and the 22nd, on the 29th of the month, and you are wrong, then you are going to be found liars on the Day of Judgment. So this is serious consequences uh, that could come to some people, especially the ones who are teaching what I believe is an error. Deuteronomy 5.12 Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as Yahweh your God has commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. You shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is inside your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as you do. So there are your scriptures which prove that this six-day cycle was continued all the way through the Old Testament. Six days of work, one day of rest, no mention of a count from a new moon or missing out new moon days or the last day of the month. Now some have said that uh, the true Sabbath day was lost when they went into Babylon. Uh, but this is fairly easy to prove wrong. Just go to the New Testament. And this is what it says in the book of Luke. Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So Jesus had a habit of going to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And if anybody's going to try and tell me that Jesus was keeping the wrong Sabbath day, you lost me there because that's just a crazy idea. But it's obvious also from this scripture that the Jews were keeping the same Sabbath day that Jesus was keeping. And this is repeated again elsewhere. Uh, when Jesus was in another synagogue in another place, and he healed a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eight years, uh, look at what one of the rulers of the synagogue said to him. Luke 13, verse 14. And answering the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, said to the crowd, There are six days in which it is necessary for men to work. Therefore come in them and be healed, 
and not on the Sabbath day. So there you have it. Old Testament, New Testament, no Sabbath day being counted from new moons, but everywhere the cycle of six days work and one day for the Sabbath is being repeated all the way through. And that is your first proof that uh, the Lunar Sabbath doctrine is false. So let's go and take a look at another proof. Uh, go to the book of Joshua. Joshua 5.10 And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month in the evening on the plains of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain in the very same day. And the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land, and there was no more manna for the sons of Israel. But they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Now the emphasis here is on verse 11. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. Now there is a scripture in the Old Testament which tells them when they could do this. Leviticus 23 verse 10 Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you, and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you on the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Leviticus 23 verse 14 now. And ye shall not eat bread, nor parched grain, nor fresh grain, until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God. It is a continual statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So before they could eat of this food, they had to bring a wave offering to God. And that was, must have been done on the 15th of the month. Therefore, the Sabbath must have been the day before this, because the wave sheaf offering had to be offered before they could eat the produce of the land. So the wave sheaf must have been waved that same day. And therefore, the Sabbath was the day before, which was the 14th of Nisan. Now, if you want another proof, uh, that the Sabbath day was not on the 15th. Uh, go and take a look at this scripture. Exodus 16.25 And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, none shall be in it. These were the instructions that they were given about gathering manna on the Sabbath day again. Uh, they were not supposed to get any manna on the Sabbath day. God told them that they wouldn't get it. But Joshua 5 verse 12 says that the manna ceased the day after they ate the produce of the land. So the manna must have ceased on the 16th. This means it did not cease on the 15th. But if the 15th had been a Sabbath day, there wouldn't have been any manna. And the scripture would have said, the manna ceased on the 15th. Let me illustrate it for you with this diagram. The 14th day of the month was the Passover. The 15th day of the month was the day they waved the sheaf and they ate the produce of the land. This means that the 14th day of the month must have been a weekly Sabbath because the wave sheaf had to be waved the day after the Sabbath. The 16th day of the month, the manna ceased. This proves it did not cease on the 15th. But if the 15th had been a weekly Sabbath, it would have ceased on that date. So that's your second proof that the lunar Sabbath doctrine is false. And if you want another proof, Let's go and look at the count to Pentecost. In the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of Weeks. 
and there are some instructions there in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, 15. And you shall number for yourself from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. To the day after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number 50 days, and you shall offer a new grain offering to Yahweh. Deuteronomy 16, verse 9. Seven weeks you shall number to you. Begin to number the seven weeks from when you begin to put the sickle to the grain. And you shall keep the feast of weeks to Yahweh your God with a tribute of a freewill offering of your hand, which you shall give to Yahweh your God according as Yahweh your God blesses you. A week is a period of seven days. The Hebrew word is Shavuah. And it comes from the same root as the word seven. The only way you can count 50 days uh, and uh, make it come to after a Sabbath day uh, is if you keep the regular seven day cycle, six days of work and one day for the Sabbath. Uh, if you try to make it fit a lunar Sabbath calendar, you've got to miss two days out of the count again. You've got to miss out the last day of Nisan, uh, which would be the 30th day, and you have to miss out the first day of Eor, which is the second month. Uh, and we're not told to do this. So here again, this is another proof that the Lunar Sabbath doctrine is wrong, because it's adding to what God's Word says. We are never given instructions to do what they have to do. So let's go and look at the fourth reason now. We'll give you a fourth scripture to prove it. And this is uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I've already made a video on this. It's called Jesus Three Days and Three Nights in the Tomb. And I suggest you go and have a look at that if you want to get the full teaching on it. Uh, but for the time being, I'll just give you uh, a clip out of that video which explains exactly when the Sabbath day fell during the week that Jesus was crucified. In the top row here, we've got the days of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. In the next row, we've got the time of day, indicating whether it's day shaded white and night shaded grey. In the third row, we have the cardinal days. A cardinal number is just like one, two, three, four. In the fourth row, we have the ordinal days. Ordinal days give the order in which they occur. So it's first, second, third, and so on. In the fifth row, we have the three days and three nights that we've talked about. This is three whole days, which is 72 hours, and it goes from about half past five on the Wednesday afternoon, and it ends about half past five on the Saturday afternoon. So those are the days when he was buried. This one here, after three days, this indicates not the time of his burial, but the time from which he died. He died about three o'clock in the afternoon, and therefore this says after three days. There are two scriptures for this that you can look at. They are Mark 8.31 and Matthew 27 verse 63. In the Greek, the words are meta, trace, himelas, which is accusative case again, and it's referring to a whole period of time so it's actually just more than three days. There would be a few hours extra. Now when we count the ordinal days, what first, second and third, there are a number of scriptures which say that Jesus rose on the third day. I'll give you some of them. Matthew 16, 21. Matthew 17, 23. Mark 9.31, Luke 9.22, 
There are quite a few others. If you want to get all the references, go to the Bible study on our website and you'll be able to find them. These are all dative case in the Greek and dative case refers to a point in time. So he rose at some point in time here on the third day. And from these other scriptures we know that it was particularly just before the sunset. So basically all the scriptures fit into this diagram. Every one that we've shown you of Jesus spoke they all fit into that diagram. There are none left out. Now Mary Magdalene came to the tomb roughly here just before sunrise. And this is where uh, Jesus had already been resurrected for some time. We don't know what happened to him in that period of time, but um, he was already up. And that basically is your diagram which shows you how three days and three nights, after three days, and on the third day, all fit together. So the Sabbath day, at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, was on the 17th day of the month, not the 15th. The 15th was a feast day, Sabbath day, but in that particular month of Nisan, the 15th is always a special Sabbath. And that is your fourth proof uh, that... Um, Sabbath day doesn't always fall on the, one of the days that the lunar Sabbath day say. 8th, 15th, 22nd and 29th of the month. So it's a proof that uh, the lunar Sabbath doctrine is false. Now I'll just summarize the things that I've said to you. We started in the book of Genesis and we showed you how God instituted six days of work and one day of rest. We showed you this cycle all the way through the Old Testament and in the New Testament, even in the times of Jesus Christ. And we know he kept the correct day. We then saw in Joshua chapter 5, how Israel crossed over Jordan and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month. And we showed you that that particular day happened to be a Sabbath day. It was on the 14th, not on the 15th. We went then to the Count of Pentecost or Feast of Weeks and we showed you a clear cycle where it was counted seven weeks plus a day or it was counted seven Sabbaths plus a day and the whole thing came to 50 days. And you can't do this count unless you are missing days out with the Lunar Sabbath uh, because you would have to miss at least two days out there and uh, there's no instructions anywhere to do it. Uh, from there we went to the resurrection and the death and burial of Jesus Christ. And we showed you there that the Sabbath day was on the 17th of the month, not the 15th. Uh, we've then seen two cases where uh, work or travelling was done on the 15th of the month. And we've also shown you a case where they were travelling on the 22nd of the month. So there are a lot of scriptures which show that these particular days were not Sabbath days. Um, this is all the proof that you should need to know that your lunar Sabbath doctrine is false. So thank you for watching. I hope that God has blessed you with this. And if he has, please give him all the glory. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Click center to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click top to see more videos and go to our website to see great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies, and lots more. God bless you.